Joining us is our political editor, Andrew Clonell. Uh, the story of yesterday and also today, it is uh, continuing to be Julian Assange. Uh, is it just a, uh, a foregone conclusion matters today, Andrew, that, you know, he has the court process, then jumps on a plane and heads here? Yeah, the government expectation is he'll be arriving in Australia tonight. And he may even be greeted by the Prime Minister. That's my tip, Pete. So that could be a bit controversial. I mean, uh, it, it's interesting how the government plays this in the sense that he's not some sort of national hero, is he? Yeah. He's an Australian citizen who was detained... He probably initially did some good things with journalists in revealing alleged war crimes. But then, you know, if you've seen any of the accounts of, of what he did, he just went over the top and just dumped out all this information, potentially exposing intelligence sources, which is why he ended up yeah. where he did. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting how the government plays this. They've done a... Uh, it's obviously been a great effort in terms of getting him out, getting Cheng Lei out, getting Sean Turnell out. Some real... Uh, on the foreign affairs front... I think they've had some real wins, re-established yeah, look... relations and dialogue with China. But uh, in this particular instance, I think there'll be a lot of people in the opposition going, let's not make a hero out of this point. No, and uh, look, I just had an interesting conversation with John Anderson, uh, the uh, former Deputy Prime Minister, who, who said something similar. He has got real issues with it because, you know, basically the actions put lives in danger. So, and, and you know, with us mm. in the media, there's this constant question when it comes to Julian Assange, well, is he actually a journalist or is he an activist? And that's, that's well, not, not going to go he's away not, anytime he's soon. Not, he's, he's not a journalist, let's face it. He's not a journalist. Yeah. And, you know, he probably, to, he probably had an opportunity to be a, like a journalist in his initial work with those journalists from The Guardian and wherever else, where they were just releasing little pieces of information that, you know, you could argue was in the public interest to release. But then mm. it just... WikiLeaks just said, oh, you, you've got a right to see everything. Yeah. And, you know... I mean, I'm all for the release of information. It is a bit of a vexed question, but I just think it, it went a bit too far. And, yeah. But in terms of his release, look, he's been in jail a fair while. He's been confined for a fair while now, so you'd yeah. have to say he's done his time, I think. Chelsea no. Manning's out, you know. Oh, it's interesting having Geoffrey Robertson on the program a little earlier, which took me back because I was there with him <laughs> back in 2010 in those early uh, court cases wow. in London. So we're going yeah, back a bit right. there. Fatima Payman, um, is there... I mean, Richard Miles asked him about this earlier. Andrew, there's not going to be any consequence uh, from her crossing the floor no. last night. What, what's going on behind the scenes that you're picking up? Well, I think the PM views her as a bit of a vulnerable young woman uh, who shouldn't be uh, excessively punished over this. But on the other hand, I guess she's in the Australian Senate, so she's as accountable as anyone there. And let's face it, it, it just uh, wouldn't have been a good look for the party to martyr her uh, over this. Uh, the, the Prime Minister's been done over by a 29-year-old woman from Western Australia on his team. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> it's a bad look for him. I guess they can be reassured it's not on a policy matter, so it didn't affect any particular policy of the government's. That might be uh, a worse situation. Well, it, if she was a 45-year-old uh, uh, union official in the Senate doing this, would she face a different punishment? I guess that's one question. Mm. What would the look have been in certain seats, and there are several of them that could be at play, if he expelled a 29-year-old Muslim woman from the party over the contentious issue of the war in Palestine? Yeah. So I think uh, at the end of the day, they just sort of thought, look, let's not get any... Uh, this will go away. People won't pay attention to it. But the difficulty is if Greens leader Adam Bant decides to do this, pull out this wedge again and again, Pete, is she going to mm. cross the floor again and again? They have to find a way to ensure that she doesn't keep doing it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, though, isn't it? It just shows how effective the Labor Party rules on this, where you are usually automatically expelled, have been, given that it's only happened in government last time in 1986. 86. <laughs> it happened in opposition with Carrie Quick in 2005. He wasn't expelled at the time. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, Bridget Archer crosses every day of the week, just about. I mean, yeah. I'm being a bit facetious, but, she, I mean, she, you know, <laughs> she yeah. crosses more times than I have well, hot dinners. Well, that's been. right, yeah. So, I mean, I... look, I mean, <laughs> and, and on religious freedom, in the, at the end of the Morrison government, they had five MPs cross on asylum seekers, I can remember yeah, yeah. here around the time of Howard. They were always people crossing. So that's the difference between the two parties. Yeah. But there's a reason the Labor Party has those rules, and that's because it stops people doing this. And she yeah. could have abstained, let's face it. So she's really given the bird to Albanese here. I suspect Dutton will pick it up and go, this shows you're weak again. Mm. 
Yep, and uh, Susan Lee's already said that point today. Hey, good to see you. Andrew Clonell there.